from there, just add an additional route inside of Angular, where this is the variable, and it's passing through the controller, and then to the service, and we have a pretty URL. Now, I'm going to show you just a little bit about Amazon API Gateway. So far, we've been using just, we've been accessing WordPress just through itself, which could lead to uh, some security vulnerabilities since the WordPress REST API is so new. We're not entirely sure what could potentially happen, what our loads are going to be like, what additional things. So as a precursor, or as a precaution, Amazon API Gateway. If you haven't heard about Amazon API Gateway, it's a fully managed API service. It allows you to build your own APIs through their interface. It's low cost. It's three dollars and fifty cents per million requests, and then there's like two cents per gig of data transfer. It's secure. You can configure it with any sorts of authorization you want to, and you have optional caching, which works ridiculously. Really Found that out. Um, creating an API. So this one, I'm creating a WordPress REST API proxy. Essentially, this API is going to connect to the WordPress REST API plugin that's locally on my computer. And I'm going to use the Amazon API gateway to connect. Resources will be listed here. I'll show you the first one I'm going to create. Create a new resource called Posts. This is the endpoint of how you're going to get it. Posts. And then we're going to create a method. And create a git method. And then configure to my local WordPress installation as an HTTP drop to, to retrieve the post from there. We're going to come back to the screen in a, in a second, but we are going to focus on method requests and integration requests, and how we can use the Amazon API gateway to use pre-existing potentially APIs uh, to connect to WordPress if we need to. And uh, I'm going to create that slug resource that we had before previously, um, and then from there, with these. Early brackets. They're basically just defining variables inside of that API. Method request. With the method request, you have optional parameters you can pull from. When I set those the curly braces and I had slug, it automatically added my request path as a slug. You can have query strings and header requests inside of here that then you can map to your through the integration request. The integration request is the how it's going to get there, what it needs to be, how it needs to be formatted in order to talk to your API. So for this guy, I'm doing an HTTP proxy. I already know that my endpoint, that was that one that we previously created with Slug. And you have to manually add in what we're going to do. So the URL path parameters from the method request integration I have slug there, and it's mapped from method request at slug. And again, that can be a query string, or it could be a header. Um, so we're just going to pass the variable to that proxy. Before we do deploy the API, we need to enable the cross origin resource sharing, of course, to allow us to, um, to talk. This is just a testing area, but you want to make sure that you have your access control allow origin set properly. Do not. So from there, this is what we've done. Create a post, a get method, variable slug method, get, connected it to our API. Now I'm deploying it to the stage. This is the enabling cache screen. This thing is said before, it's really, really powerful. Your WordPress installation could go down by itself and it would keep on going, pulling the information from the cache. It, it's super powerful. Um, 
able to file watch logs. I'm not going to get into file watch logs in this talk, but it, the file watch logs and the metrics allow you to configure custom uh, messages and custom screens inside of there for logs. Back to our Angular JS application, just updating the endpoint to use the Amazon API gateway. And that's all we have to do. And we can now spread our cache, spread our cache log work. Because who doesn't like cats? Clearly, I was writing this at 3 a.m. So, um, yes, now, now essentially, this, this Angular JS application has been local. And now we're going to get into Amazon S3 and how we can take Angular and have it posted on their static hosting. Amazon S3. So this is a simple storage system. It's low cost. It's available. You can store as much as you want on there. Um, the uptime. And it, it's you know, it, it's a good system. I'm sure you guys are familiar with Amazon. Creating a bucket as per their best practices. I mean, the bucket, the domain name. So it's also catalog.com. Now I need to add a bucket policy to allow people to access the awesomecatalog.com and its resources like the normal web host would do. So configuring the policy, the version number is the best practices. It always, always needs to be 2012 and 17. Please correct me if I'm wrong, but it's not it. And then we're saying the resource to the awesomecatalog.com We're allowing everyone to access it. Enabling website hosting. There's a button for it. The index document is index.html. And we want to drop in some rewrite rules just for it. This is very Angular specific. So, so we upload the documents. And now our awesome catalog is live up there. And it is on the web. So we moved it locally. Local US3. It's pretty cool. There is a slight issue though with our formulas. So the REST API is going to be calling the links, basically all that all that data straight from WordPress. So we're moving it someplace else. We get update the links to manage. So we wrote a random request one. Um, and we're going to just filter post link with the static domain URL. A WordPress plugin has a WP AWS option to it, so we can drop that in. Uh, we can do the awesomecatblog.com inside that option. And every time that post link is called, we're just replacing the home URL with the uh, static URL. We're almost done. Um, so far, we've, we've needed to have WordPress hosted all the time. And now I'm going to show you how we can take WordPress off the internet, keep it hosted locally, come off your computer, and let your website keep going through Amazon Lambda and Amazon DynamoDB. Amazon DynamoDB. Well, this says a lot of things. <laughs> um, so the Amazon DynamoDB, it is a NoSQL database. Uh, it is a low pricing but it's well worth it. It's ridiculously fast. It's super configurable. And uh, it ties in with all their other services. Writing a table to get us started. Like cat or table thing with just cat table. That's it. Let me go to the AWS Lambda. Hopefully this has everything. It doesn't. So AWS Lambda allows you to run your code outside without in your environment without servers. You can use Node.js as a runtime or Java as a runtime. I'm using Node.js. Um, and the pricing depends on your request size, the file size that you're using, and the execution time. So it's very important that when you're writing this stuff, pressure will be on to make sure that we have good, well-rounded code that doesn't just infinitely loop forever. They have blueprints. They have an extensive tutorial section. 
I'm not using a blueprint, I'm just going to skip it, but this is the first page when you want to create a function. Inside of here, I'm using WP Folder Soaps as the function name. And I've already placed the page of this in here, but we'll move that in a second. Do a runtime OGS. Create a role where I can, it's a basic execution role with uh, DynamoDB access. And then I create another function that just getting the, it's a post function where then I can go back and call and read that DynamoDB. I have a read and list function, uh, or read, read and list operation. And this is straight from their, um, their tutorial or school. Uh, this is the, the function for the WP tables. It's basically going to be a hook from WordPress when you upload, publish or update a post that connects to their gateway API and sends a signal to Lambda that says, hey, you just updated something, go and pull the new stuff in store. So, we're just getting the important things connecting to DynamoDB the event, I'm making sure that I have an event URL. We'll get into it in a second with the, the plugin. Uh, there is an endpoint on returning stuff. All the console logs you see in here are connecting to the Amazon, the, uh, the cloud watch, the cloud logs, just, just spitting out inside of there, which is great. Um, making sure that the status code is uh, requesting the endpoint, getting the status code, logging the status code. And then I start getting the data and yeah. making sure if it is a 200 status code, I am taking the, the, the body that we got and putting it to DynamoDB. Uh, if nothing, we didn't do anything. That's it. Oh, okay. So this is preparation for the, the hook portion inside of WordPress. There's API keys that we can enable inside of uh, the Amazon Gateway API. Uh, and basically, you just click on it, hit create, and it gives you a little key. Um, you associate it to the stage, that test stage that was previously created. And then I created another resource for WP updates, where I'm posting to the WP, WP updates endpoint. With the uh, basically, I just sent the, the URL, the rest, your WordPress REST API URL, the endpoint to get that resource. Here we are saying that we need to require the API key. And now the post is the Lambda function integration type. You can see here that was that WP publish hook and the function. For this post, we did the same thing. Just created a post method integration request for post plan the function. I'm not the best at, at naming things, so, but for whatever, it, it makes sense. Huh? Okay. And now we, inside of our random WordPress plugin, we Add an action to publish post, and we're hooking into it down here, where we have this lovely, we go naming conventions again, WP, Azure, AWS, and API key, that was our API key we made before. Um, again, 3 a.m. coding, so. But we're getting the options for the, the hook URL, going to the WP updates, sending the endpoint, and creating the arguments to post over, setting up the headers, the XAPI key, the body, the URL, and from there, just testing, testing the, the sending to the function, shows that once we hook into it, then goes to DynamoDB, and we can just turn off our computers and Essentially, post WordPress leak. That's it. 
Magento, though, so. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, but $44 for a gig database, a gig database storage isn't bad either. If you don't have to worry about the performance and how it's going to scale and who's going to access it, how many times you read and write back and forth on it, $44 bucks for a gig of storage isn't bad. Let me get it right down. Um, question about the options call with uh, the course. Um, of course, Postman doesn't do the options call, but Chrome and Firefox, they do it for you. Is there a way that you found to avoid that? What's that? Doing the options call. Options course. In your uh, origin. Huh? You can want that itself for you. Yeah, the course thing where Chrome will do an options call to make sure that the call you're about to do is So, yeah, it doesn't, you're right. And before I deployed it, I did skip a step. Before I deployed it to Postman, you can actually tie right into that URL and test uh, without enabling the, the, the course. So you can test it before deploying it. I just I skipped several steps for my Is there a way to make Chrome not do the options for Yeah, I, I haven't been able to Any other questions? 